Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Griffin here. And with 2022 nearly coming to a close, well, this means that with a new calendar year right around the corner, stock market investors above the age of 18 will have access to a brand new contribution room that is added to their tax free savings account or TFSA for short. Now, every year I like to give an update on the TFSA contribution limit to give the audience a refresher on how the TFSA works as a registered investment account to allow your portfolio to grow on a tax free basis. And the reason why I continuously come back to this topic is because over the years of making these videos, well, I've come to realize that a high percentage of my viewers actually tend to be immigrants coming into Canada. In fact, in 2022, 342,000 permanent residents entered the country and the TFSA is truly one of the best investment accounts that you can utilize when you're first starting out as a Canadian. So in today's video, we'll first be covering the TFSA's past as well as new contribution limit for 2023, followed with how the TFSA's cumulative nature works depending on your age, and then finally, how you can utilize the TFSA to grow the value of your investment portfolio tax-free over the years. All right, so the TFSA or tax-free savings account is a Canadian registered investment account, meaning it was created by and is regulated by the Canadian government. And the main advantage of the TFSA over say just a regular investment account is the fact that as your portfolio collects any dividend income, interest payments, or simply grows in value over time, all of that growth and income is tax-free. So again, in contrast to say a regular investment account, well, any dividend income that that portfolio is generating would be subject to tax every single calendar year. And in parallel to that, well, any growth of the assets themselves would be subject to what's known as capital gains tax down the line when and if you choose to sell any of those investments and they've grown in value. Now, of course, this tax-free advantage also comes with a couple of caveats, mainly the fact that your contributions to the TFSA are what's known as after-tax. So let's just say in simple terms, you made $50,000 this year, you would pay income tax on that $50,000 and what's left over, your net income after tax, you can from that amount then make contributions to your TFSA. The reason why I mentioned that is because in parallel to this, say an RRSP, which is also a registered investment account, well, with the RRSP, any contributions you make to that account are actually tax deductible from your total taxable income. But without getting too complicated here, essentially your TFSA contributions are going to be after paying your income tax on a yearly basis. In addition to this, you can only make contributions up to a certain amount every single calendar year that is set out by the federal government known as your TFSA contribution room per year. So yeah, the contribution limit is set by the Canadian federal government. And in recent years, that contribution limit has been around $6,000. In fact, this right here is a chart showcasing yearly contribution limits since inception of the TFSA in 2009. And we can clearly see that the new contribution room for 2023 will in fact be $6,500, representing a $500 increase over the 2022 contribution limit. And as a quick side note here, the contribution limit increases are actually indexed to inflation in $500 increments. So that's why you'll often see, in this case, several periods of stack and growth in terms of the contribution room. But considering current inflation levels that are very high right now, uh, for 2024, there is actually a high chance that it could increase to $7,000. Uh, but you'll have to come back next year to my video, the TFSA update video, to see whether or not the TFSA contribution room did in fact increase to $7,000 in 2024. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. But yeah, so if you came here for the 2023 TFSA contribution limit, it is $6,500 for this calendar year year. Let's now speak about how that can apply to your particular situation, depending on your age and various different other factors. All right, now before you can figure out how much contribution room you will have moving into 2023, here are two factors to keep in mind relative to the TFSA. Number one, your contribution room is cumulative from the year that you turn 18. So this means that if you're say 40 years old watching this right now, and you've never made a contribution to your tax-free savings account, well, moving into 2023, you would have a total cumulative contribution contribution room of $88,000. This essentially means that you can make contributions all the way up to $88,000 right now, or again, spread out over years, it's up to you. And number two here, you can only benefit from contribution room for your TFSA in years that you are a permanent resident to Canada and had a valid SIN no matter what your age is. So again, if you are say 40 years old right now, however, you only became a permanent resident to Canada in 2022, well, you unfortunately would not have access to any of the cumulative contribution room from 2009 all the way up to 2021, you would have $6,000 for 2022. And then as of 2023, an additional $6,500. 
So let's actually now look at a handful of common examples that people watching this video right now might find themselves in. If you're 17 years old right now and will turn 18 years old as of 2023, well, this would mean that moving into 2023, you will have a total contribution room of $6,500. If you're say 25 years old right now, meaning you turned 18 as of 2015, and again, you've never made a contribution to your TFSA, well, this would mean that as of right now, you'd have a cumulative contribution room of 50,500, and once 2023 rolls around, you'd have a total of $57,000. Third example here where you're a new immigrant to Canada and say you're 30 years old, but you only became a permanent resident as of 2020, this would mean that in 2023, you would have a total cumulative contribution room of $24,500. And finally, for the fourth example here, something a little bit different. So once again, you only accumulate contribution room in the years that you're a permanent resident to Canada. So say you spend time in Canada and some other years, you split your time between another country. Well, this would mean that you would only accumulate contribution amounts in the years that you were in fact a permanent resident of Canada. So let's just say in 2019 and 2020, you weren't a permanent resident, you wouldn't have access to those years of contribution limit added to your total cumulative contribution room. So hopefully these examples help you determine your own cumulative contribution room as of 2023. And if you're still not sure and you really want to know exactly what it is, you can simply log into your my CRA account online and you'll get that value. All right, and finally, how can you start actually utilizing your TFSA to successfully grow the value of your investment portfolio and net worth over time? Now, I'll start off by mentioning the fact that although the tax-free savings account would theoretically allow for tax-free gains on massive home run investments, which for example is the reason why some have managed to amass million-dollar TFSAs, well, you want to think twice about the risk that you're taking relative to what you're buying in the TFSA. And the reason why I mention this is twofold. Number one, there's no concept concept of tax loss harvesting within the confounds of your tax-free savings account. So this means that unlike if you lose say $5,000 within your regular investment account, you're actually able to claim that $5,000 materialized loss against your taxable income for the calendar year. But that's not the case within a tax-free savings account. You get that advantage of tax-free growth over time, but if you actually materialize any losses, you're not able to claim those losses as a deduction from your taxable income. And the second reason is that you can actually permanently lose TFSA contribution room depending on the actions that you take within your account. Notably, if you have a massive loss within your TFSA and actually end up selling those positions and then withdrawing that amount from your TFSA, you can actually lose contribution room. For example, if you just turned 18 years old this year, so you had a contribution room of $6,000, made that $6,000 contribution and invested into something really risky, losing 50% of its value, meaning you're down $3,000. Well, let's say you need that $3,000 now in order to make a purchase and you withdraw that $3,000, unfortunately, you're only able to then recontribute $3,000 to your TFSA. You're not able the next year to recontribute a total of that $6,000 in contribution room from the given year. Now, the way this is actually calculated is somewhat complicated, so I'll leave a video right here that you can check out where I go over the exact calculation for how you can gain and lose contribution room. So the point being here, although I'm all for trying to maximize investment returns over time through investing in equity specifically, especially if you're younger and have, say, decades of investment horizon ahead of you to ride through different market cycles, well, there's still a difference between investing in, say, the NASDAQ 100, which is somewhat high risk, high reward, versus investing in, say, a brand new nickel mining company. So if you're serious about investing for the long term and allowing your investments to compound on a tax-free basis, which realistically is the way that you should probably approach your investing, especially within the TFSA, well, I'd suggest looking into exchange traded funds, ETFs for short, in order to allow your portfolio to gain exposure, diversified exposure that is, to a variety of different positions, say with the S&P 500, allowing your portfolio to gain exposure to 500 of the largest companies that operate and are listed on the American stock exchanges. As an example here, someone starting to invest in their TFSA as of this year with the starting balance of $6,500 and continuing to contribute to the account over the next 30 years, investing at say an average 8% annual interest rate, well the end portfolio balance would be 
$801,000. And that's without considering any reinvestment of dividend income. And also considering the fact that the contribution limit would stay the same at $6,500 for the next 30 years, which realistically is not going to be the case. In 30 years, the annual contribution room will probably be $15,000, $20,000 a year, considering inflation. So if you are interested in learning more about how you can get started with even as little as $1,000, definitely check out this video that I have released recently on the channel, as well as a handful of others that are highly relevant. Now, if you want to take this one step further, learn everything you need to know about navigating the stock market as a DIY retail investor, specifically in the Canadian space, check out my full stock market investing course that I made completely for free and released it over on Skillshare. You can check it out. It has over seven hours of video content going over again, every single topic you need to know in order to confidently navigate the stock market and create a portfolio that's actually suitable for your needs as an investor. Additionally, if you're looking to start investing in the stock market but haven't even yet opened an account, definitely check out either Well Simple Trade or Quest Trade, both of which I have a link down below in the description where you can get some free money for opening up the account and getting started with your portfolio. Thanks a lot for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a second to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and on that note, I'll see you in the next one.